awaken, warrior. The time for your death is not yet at hand. Now that winter has finally settled in, it's time to take a moment and talk about a game with snow and ice and darkness and vikings and axes and swords. For what better time than now, at the beginning of a new year when everyone is huddled around the fire to talk about a game that delves into the myths and legends of Norse culture, into the mythology of the old gods. And that game is Rune, made 17 and a bit years ago by Human Head Studios, a game that will soon get a sequel entitled Rune Ragnarok, a game that I have very fond memories of, sort of. Rune is a bit of a divisive game. On the one hand, it's a game, an action game, where you run around as a viking, chopping the heads and limbs off everything you see in sight. You can even pick up some of those limbs and use them as weapons, like you could also do in Severance the Blade of Darkness, which would come a year later. The games do share some similarities in the way that they sort of are part, technically-ish, of the same genre. Okay, they're not in the same genre. Rune has no RPG elements, there's no progression. Also, Rune definitely has better movement control, better platforming. It's not as awkward and clunky in the out-of-combat movement as Severance was. Severance, however, kicks the crap out of it in terms of depth of combat. Though there are enemies in the Rune where you can only defeat them by beheading them, so you actually have to aim for the head. And because you're playing as a short guy named Ragnar, you have to jump to actually decapitate them, which is kind of funny. Your mission as Ragnar is to basically save the world. You are just anointed into the Odin's Blade and are tasked with protecting the runestone of your village because if the runestones are all destroyed then everything goes to crap. You learn that the other runestone of another village is in danger, so you race there with a boat, with your dad and the other fighters in your village, your lifelong friends, and you all get murderized. But Odin does not let you die. Odin chooses you to protect the world, to stop the oncoming darkness, to go through one of the worst parts of the game for several hours. Now this is why I say that Rune is kind of a divisive video game. I enjoy the combat and it's not what you'd call precise, it's hack and slash as much as hack and slash can be, but it's fun. Because you can chop things as arms off, you have four different types of weapons, each of them has different kind of attacks, they all have special powers you get via runes, which you don't really use all that often because it's a power you have to collect, it doesn't regenerate on its own. You've got shields for more tactical maneuvering options such as blocking, and you have enemies that do interesting things, you have this sort of snake kind of planty thing that comes out of a nest I think or something that can grab you and then spin you around and around. You've got goblins that set traps for you which consist of a giant drumstick under a cage. You've got the undead warriors I told you about where you have to chop their heads off to actually kill them or set them on fire and then wait. You've got, you've got a lot of potential for fun. That's not what you do for about two hours of the game. No, for the first two hours or so you try to figure out where the hell you have to go and do a lot of platforming. I'm, I'm probably gonna do a show about this because there was a mania, I think to a point it still is, in the games industry where they make action games really heavy on platforming. You saw it from Rune all the way up to Jedi Academy. Well, Jedi Academy not so much, but Jedi Knight 2, oh my god! I don't know why they put so much platforming in there. You could probably blame Tomb Raider because it was a de facto 3D action game for a while and it did have a lot of platforming because it was the idea of the game, but it sort of didn't feel right in games like Rune, like Severance, like Jedi Knight 2, didn't gel well with, uh, well with anything else. And in Rune it's, it's a bit more difficult for a couple of reasons. One, the game tends to be dark as all hell, so you will literally not be able to see where you're going. I even had a sort of a broken monitor back in the day, so I would just move forward to the darkness and keep pressing control 
hoping I would find a switch that would open a door somewhere because I could not see anything. I was happy when I saw an enemy just rise up from the ground after I hit them first so they would resurrect because when the skeletons resurrect they actually cast a light around them. Sure you can have torches then I would go through many 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 trials and tribulations trying to keep a torch alive but they weren't all that often and you couldn't really carry a torch and a weapon at the same time. Also no light spells in case you're wondering it wasn't that kind of game. Though again you did have a flaming sword if you had the power and if you wanted to waste it on illumination instead of actual combat. But apart from the darkness there was also the level design. Rune to its credit is kind of creative. You never know where the path is gonna take you, where the path actually is. It's very very three-dimensional but unfortunately the scenery looks the same. It's it's very bland in terms of how everything looks so you may be confused at times as to where you are, where you're supposed to go and what exactly can you interact with and what can be interacted with sometimes. And also there is the fact that although movement through the world is a lot better than you would see in Severance, physics would sometimes throw a curveball and you would find yourself slowly stepping next to a ledge and then flying off and hitting the opposite wall and dying because you were catapulted due to some funky geometry. So basically you spend the first hour or so of the game swimming, fighting mud crabs from... I think this is where Bethesda got the idea. I mean, they work with Human Head on a lot of projects, so I think this is where they got the idea for mud crabs because they look just like them and some of them are giant enemy crabs that you have to roll over on their back and then hit them for massive damage. They are completely historically accurate. But yeah, the, the first couple of hours aren't that great. And then you get to hell. I mean, hell the person in the place. That's hell. And you have to navigate through more dark corridors, doing more platforming, jumping on things, climbing on things, avoiding lava, quick saving every time you get a chance to. By the way, if you're gonna play this game, apart from quick saving, also make regular saves because quick saves, they're kept in RAM. They're not saved to the disk. That's why quick loading is so fast. So make a manual save, like a full save once in a while so you won't have surprises or just use the level skip cheat if you really want to. The game doesn't really pick up steam like to the point where you don't actively feel like you should stop playing because it's annoying until you get through Hell's Domain and you get to a more civilized area where at least you can see civilization somewhere in the distance and you start fighting humans and wendels which are big snowy creatures that look like they just came out of a cave from Hoth but you will still have to deal with navigation puzzles some of them well, they weren't obvious to me I gotta be honest some of them were not obvious to me at all when I played the game first time many many years ago I there's a bit where you have to go under the ice to, uh, I think it was under the ice, to get past a gate that's blocking your path in a town. I had no clue. Like, I had no idea that I was supposed to go down there. I didn't even know where down there was. So I just cheated and no clip through the gate. I don't know if I was just kind of stupid back then in terms of navigation. I completely incapable of finding my way in a straight line. But I cheated a lot in Rune just to get from one place to another because one... I didn't know where to go and to even today it can be a bit confusing at times I mean just a tiny little bit you're never quite sure what you can grab onto until you actually go do it and fall flat on your face and die you're never quite sure if you took the right turn and ended up where you have to be or if you have to go back and uh, try to outrun a giant fish again. Not saying it's it's a bad design choice to make the game like that, but I didn't find it as good as Severance. Because Severance has a lot of bullshit in terms of jump from here to here and do this and that and do something else than fighting. But the fighting in that game makes everything worth it. Whereas the fighting in Rune, although it's nice, it's action packed, it's, it's savory. <sighs> It doesn't have as much depth in it, it doesn't have as much finesse to it. It's not as pleasurable, as enjoyable, as, as fun. It's a blast, don't get me wrong, but it's just not at the same level. Though I do appreciate things like everything being manual, like you don't have a dodge key to save your ass, you have to move by yourself, you have to time everything by yourself. There's also not much in the way of fancy moves you can pull off special attacks. You know, things that give the game like this 
flavor, soul if you will. What did improve the game for some was the addition of multiplayer. I never played it. I have no idea how the multiplayer mode works, but it does include a lot of modes, some of them being very very unique and interesting, so I guess that would be nice. The current version of the game does have multiplayer, it's uh, the Halls of Valhalla one, but the old one I had was just plain old Rune. And if you're interested, well, you can get Rune in the classic version, meaning that it's the old game, but complete and functional and works in pretty much any system, though you may have to use some any file editing to get it to work on the proper resolution. It's on Steam, it's on GOG, and it costs, well, around 10 euros. I want to say this is a must-play. It's got some nice bits in it, and sometimes I do get the nostalgia of playing it again when I just run around climbing on vines and chains and jumping on platforms and throwing switches and levers, occasionally fighting something, saving up those rune powers to do something sweet with them, realizing there's never enough rune power to make things fun, and pretty much just going back to Severance. But Rune itself wasn't bad, it's just, in hindsight, kind of, eh, it was nice then, annoying a bit, it was nice, but I don't want to say it's because it aged badly, it was sort of always like this, but I have high hopes that uh, Rune Ragnarok will improve upon it, and maybe give it the, the combat system it deserves, and tone down some of the we're like Tomb Raider gameplay aspects, so come think of it. I actually hope they don't, because we don't have a Tomb Raider anymore, like in the traditional Tomb Raider sense. Again, haven't played Rise of the Tomb Raider, just played the reboot, it, uh, it wasn't a Tomb Raider game. So yeah, go nuts with platforming in Rune Ragnarok. Looking forward to it. Goodbye.